Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Toll Podcast. I am your host, Andmel. With me today, we have Ek, the Blacktron Man, Elephant Pachyderm with a peg leg. Blacktron. Exactly. However, that's actually not going to be the topic of today's podcast. So. Someday. Blacktron. I mean, we will be getting the Blacktron talking pretty quickly, pretty quickly, which will have a bit of biological relevance. However, because right now we're still going through um, all the webcomics that us some um, Toll Bros have made, well... Starting with your first, unless you're in more and more, more black turn mood, I don't know. It doesn't really matter which one you actually talk about. Well, we'll talk Pirate's Life because right. it is my first webcomic. It's a little bit more relevant, perhaps? It is definitely um, more relevant because, A, I actually invest a lot more in it. Uh, yeah. It has over just over 600 comics now as opposed to my other one, which has barely over 100. And uh, how, how many subscribers you got to this one? Uh, last I checked, somewhere around 20? Rocking them big numbers, baby, rocking them big numbers. I forgot to ask that to how many, um, uh, subscribers you had on his, but... A lot more than me, I'll tell you that. But daily updates Wait, I did do that. help a lot. I didn't mention this in my last podcast, but the links to these will be in the description below. I did make sure to put the link to the podcast, or the, not the podcast, to the, the comics, so if people are curious about these, I mean, half of the viewers probably already know these so you know but for the other half those other three people also before we get too far in uh if you guys want to get me to 100 subscribers i will bury the new in the dirt that will happen at 100 subscribers make it happen pass it on like the video subscribe and all that jibber jabber all right thank you for the plug and moving on so uh pirate's life if i'm correct is the first comic that was actually on comic fury yes at least that we made i was the of us Toa Brothers, I was the one who pioneered using the website Comic Fury to host my webcomics. I was beat out by How One and making webcomics. I mean, technically, the Lost Toa beat everyone. Yes, Lost technically. Toa technically beat everyone. But I was the first to use this platform, the first to get kind of more serious about posting it, I would say. You can all fight me over that. I mean, I don't want to fight you. I don't, I don't want to do that, but I mean... You are the one who basically, like, basically started the trend of everyone using Comic Fury. Like, you discovered it, you used it, and everyone was like, you know what, this has been working great because... I mean, first I discovered it, created a kind of a website, and then I decided this is too difficult for me to figure out. And then later I came back to it and realized, oh, this is actually not that hard. This I mean, it is, is great. possible maybe they had updated to make it easier for all we no, know. No, no. It was definitely just me getting. Smarter, I mean, I will say this: I, I was proud months. of myself when I decided to make um, set up my comic theory page. So I pretty much did I think without your help for the most part. I think I did it pretty much on my Sometimes own. Sometimes it's complicated enough that when I have to go back and change something, I'm like, "How do I do this? It's been so long." Oof, that. Well, with but, crossover recently, I had to change the header, and I'm like, it took me a bit longer than it should have to find where to change it. Yeah, but you know enough about comic theory, you know. There's not a whole lot to say to help, so but let's it's get into website. the comic. So, what exactly is a pirate's life? What, what would you describe the comic as if someone was asking well, which I am right now? First off, a pirate's life is about merchants. <laughs> yes, obviously. What is well, it it's kind of de- de- delved into two storylines. The first storyline is about a merchant named Edward, and or two merchants, Edward and Rex. And these were characters that I had originally started on a now defunct website called The Forbidden Cove. May she rest in peace. David Jones Walker. But there were some stories that people did on there, and I created a couple characters. Well, technically, I can only create one and a half characters, because well, Rick, Rick's was kind of a stolen... By, well, Rick, Rick's was created by technically Rick Rick's. You just, you just grabbed... The other um, member, Rick Rex, and just put him in your story, essentially. Yeah, he was a good buddy of mine, so I only half created him. But Edward was a character in that story, and I really wanted to do more with him. Especially once the Cove was kind of dying. And too. I'm not even sure how I took the leap from making it a webcomic. That might have been how One's influence, like after making those comics of Sheepy and Dr. Freestyle... Possibly around that same time, but I also like just started writing an actual story with Edward, or maybe just this? all the other Lego web comics that we watched or read. We were just like, you know, what? we're going to do our own. Either way, he ended up being the main character of the story, and he just goes on interesting adventures, shenanigans, and shenanigans. happens. But do it's a very 
plot story driven. There's not a whole lot of action. There's like almost no character driven stuff, I would say. But at some point after a couple hundred comics in, the storyline kind of ended up being where he met Von C, my oldest Who else? minifig, my oldest pirate minifig. Ah, that's, that's where the name Pirates in a Pirate Slice comes from. I mean, he was the first person to technically see. Oh, yes, the first comic. It's Von C, my first comic. That's my first minifig. It's very, very... Um, there's a word that's just escaping me right now. Appropriate. Appropriate, yes. Cathartic? No, not cathartic. It's very appropriate. It could be cathartic if done in the right situation. Anyways, <laughs> the, the storyline map, just after doing it, I realized I want to do more with Von C. By the way, map, if you're curious, is an acronym. So For Marooned and Pirate. Just, just in I'm, case I'm people are I'm quite proud of this acronym. It does work well, in all honesty. But I will say, like... They were characters that were really fun to work with. And it was just... Well, Von C is definitely one of my favorite minifigs. He's also my oldest minifig. Jeez, I wonder if that has anything to do with it, you know? Being there since, like, a baby, you know? I was three years old when I yeah, got him. Yeah, you're... Barely close. three. I was, you're, like, three years old. Yeah, exactly. You're pretty much a baby when you got him. Yeah, it's like, he practically predates my memories. Almost, but not quite. <laughs> well, he predates uh, the young Anvermel here. Oh, yes, he Him and a few other figs predates me, but... Only a few. Little... Only, like, four other five. minifigs. A total of five, five minifigs. <laughs> predates, predates me, yes, yes. Either so. way, there was a storyline that involved him, and then story, that storyline ended, and later on I realized, you know what? I could pick up where this guy left off. So now he has his own storyline. So I've got two storyline going. So up the word, the, na- the title, A Pirate's Life, is now actually half hacker because it is about a pirate's life i mean you've kind of used that as a joke for them that they're merchants and it's a pirates. running gag every time someone mentions to Meets edward rex easily. that says they're pirates they'll yell out merchants i i I'll, I'll definitely say that um a pirate's life at least for me i think is definitely one of the more interesting ones because like even compared to like some of the other stuff i feel like it delves most into the um uh the importance of old, like of, of very specific nostalgic sets more so than I would say how ones does. How ones gives importance in stories too important stuff. How ones old sets are part of a story and often have important plot in points. my s- new comic. My old sets are integral to the plot. Very integral, very much. Honestly, I would say the the creation of a pirate's life kind of really spurred a greater mythos to stuff by just like the one of the tournament uh parts of it with old figs and such a pirate's life literally created the whole old fig phenomenon which old... it was very much like a random thing that i was like because i had gandalf explaining some random stuff to some characters once and it somehow ended up being that all the old I'm like well the old figs were powerful and magical, and the old figs are basically just the first mini figs that got in the like, first two, three years. Yeah. I'm mean, let's be honest. These comics, honestly, is a good gateway and a window into our childhood, especially like a pirate's life. And when we talk about um, how one's um, Android files, those two comics specifically, I would say, are quite good windows into what our childhood games either could have been like what we wanted them to be like or we wished them to be like or if you're just curious what sort of characters we had as kids well a lot of these minifigs are the same as we've gone over i think in over older podcasts now um a pirate's life was it ever intended to be like um a comedic gum comic or is that just something that was only ever no on the side? like there are gags there are humorous moments but it was it's always been a story driven comic and that is where, well, I like to do it. I don't like doing action scenes. There's no... Those are difficult. I'm taking too many pictures. Well, even when I'm reading other web comics, I don't like doing the ac- reading well, the action scenes because they're also... boring. Like, oh, they're they're fighting. It's like, yeah, just blah, blah. Just get the to the story. Is, when, because you're taking pictures, it's really hard to make action look cool with Lego unless you're like a really good editing person like that one guy on Flickr with it's those also face our... pictures. It's also... I found it's a real pain because I had a big fight scene. You also have four scene. pictures in per comic. You take with. one picture, and then you have to change like the whole layout. Take one picture, change the whole layout, and you have to also just try to like make in your mind like how does this battle actually progress? There's there's a bit of realism in my thing, and it's also ridiculous because there's spaceships and sailing ships in the same shot with Jedi mucking about. So yeah, just realism. Just it's, don't it's... think too much about it. Like honestly, like a lot of the comics, like. 
If you don't think about the world they live in, you're fine. Because let's be honest, these Whereas are... me, I think too much about the world. Well, yes, we, we And I gone... made it work, even if it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> and like a pirate's life, you've had many hiatuses over the years. Yes, Honestly, it was very stop and go. A lot of times it was just laziness. Other times it was kind of just other projects, but I've been pretty good the last couple of years. I was going to say, for the last, like, pretty much since COVID hit, you've been very consistent. Eh, well, you know, well, even COVID kind of helps with just a lot of sort of projects for everyone yeah a lot of building projects i think even if our, for our lives it didn't change that much it just made us think like we had an excuse in the now. last year like actually having a house it's been mm. a lot helpful because i kind of have this dedicated space for comic picture taking I, I mean the space in the old apartment was always a problem with us we're taking pictures of anything yeah, you pretty much had to like very pre-plan and like okay we have to clean up and you pretty much have to take as many pictures you could. Well, in like, one like, go we, we have two people time. with the amount of with the amount of stuff that takes up like four people. Stuff two in people three in a three bedroom, bedroom apartment. apartment sounds great. Not when you have like almost a million Lego bricks between the two of you. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. Now, what would you say is your um like with like a pirate's life? Um, obviously it's been going for quite a while since 2012. So it's like the fall of 2012. Years? It'll be celebrating its 10 years this year, actually. Mm, don't forget about that. Well. I mean, I know you celebrated the 42nd comic, but, uh, you well, know. Well, that's important. Very important. <laughs> and, you know, I like to do something a little bit special, not like this 500, 600 kind of comics. I, I. Yeah, and it's like one thing I've actually, that I've always enjoyed about, um, uh, what's it called? The Pirate's Life. I think for me specifically is just unintentionally, the character, well, Edward has always been confused he's a bit like, of a persona of myself let's be honest in a so way. much so that zach has been confused many times that he's your sig fig when he, it didn't not. help that he was like at, used as an avatar and looks a lot like your sig fig at least yeah. did that, that, yeah that. yeah i did so, change my sig fig to better different and especially when we were living together in the same apartment um definitely when we would reread old and then like you know out loud use different characters i always became rick ricks and i would say unintentionally i i put my i um uh What's the term? I, I put myself into Rick Ricks. Like I like to pretend that I was Rick Ricks. A lot and more. yeah, it definitely unintentionally. Just whenever I try to like picture Rick Ricks's character, it's always kind of in a unvermelish sense. I mean, it helps that you know we lived with each other for quite a while, and even the, like and even the character he had before, it wasn't too dissimilar. Well, like, look, like look, look, look at the two of us. You're the straight man. I'm the I'm the more silly one. And the sidekick. Which is pretty much the way you describe Edward and Ricks. And it's not like you have Rick Ricks around to um converse with anymore. To uh, Edward is my most straight man out of all my mini figs. He is the, like yep. the most serious straight man you got. So much so that on for male here has described him as boring sometimes. He can be. He definitely there was different spurts in the comic where I think, especially when you like you have like interaction with Vonsi, Weasels, guy checking outside bay, he seems extra boring. Lately, he seems less boring and just stoic. I would say, I think you've actually managed to get him having a bit more character, it feels like. Whether I know what it is or not, it at least feels like there's more character there. I do plan to actually delve into his backstory in a future plotline. I can't even, I don't even know what his backstory is. Well, I know a little bit of his backstory. How he I don't even know what his full backstory is. I mean, to be honest though, if you don't know, I probably don't know because... I, I know many secrets yeah, of the. Yeah, uh, I don't X. know my own character. Who does? Literally, no one. Uh, sorry, uh, Edward knows. Edward knows the character of Edward. He's a no, plastic little minifigure, to... but he knows deep down inside. He knows. Also, I think one of the best things about uh, Pirates Life for you is just an excuse to take pictures of folks and use them. Well, it's not just an excuse to take pictures, but it's an excuse to use my boats. Use my like. I also try to just incorporate pirate sets you do have a few of them it's like uh they're going the current storyline has they're headed towards the pirate's perilous pitfall which is a lego set i said that uh Ak hero i believe wanted for quite a long time hey it was in the catalogs and it was pretty cool it, it was cool. i didn't even know what it was called because it didn't have the name in the catalogs i mean we had those the small little ones so no yeah they did usually, usually often didn't have in names. those later years no they didn't very sad very sad but, but it also, like, I've tried, at this point, I've had most of the pirate ships, or well, a few of the pirate ships appear, they will all have te technically get some screen time, even if it's just a single shot. 
Nah, it's all neat sometimes. Actually, I haven't used like the I use the Imperial ships, not the other. But also, yeah, I like to spread sets along with my own mocks and creations. Also, this thing of the boats actually reminded me of the last comic that you posted, where just using a single like comic of just four pictures of a boat sailing really does help make it feel like the journeys actually take longer rather than having the movie problem of oh we're at point A and we're not point B. Well, those are the easiest comics to make just because I have I ha already have a good supply I think of it, well, the reason, ship sailing on the ocean, so I just grab oh I just grab a few random ones. Well, one there. reason why it works Add I think so of... well is because they're waiting to get to the location and we're waiting for the next comic. We have to wait an extra week to get something interesting. Well, it's the only time where comic time and actual real time flow at the same rate. Yeah, but I'm like, it, it does the effect of, oh, they're taking a while to get to the location like really, really well. Like, you could have just like one picture in a They comic, sailed. But I'm Boring. Like, I'll, like, normally a lot of times I'd be like, oh, he cheap died. You get that. But like this last time I was like, you know what? This actually makes it feel like they're taking a while because... Let's be honest, in any kind of media, it's really the distance between times, like movies specifically have, and TV shows, they get from point A to point B, like that. TV shows can do it a little bit better because they, they, can. they can stretch things out. Movies seem to be really bad for that. Montages, that's literally what they're made for. Lord of the Rings knows how to do that. Lord of the Rings knows how to make it look like they traveled like two, across two Earth globes <laughs> in like five minutes. With epic music and hills and mountains and a goat. And New Zealand. I New mean, Zealand works. helps a lot. Yes. New Zealand, everyone. Um, yeah. Fire Life is... It's, it's definitely it's, near it's, and dear to my heart. It's had quite a history. Because, like, when you first posted, you had it on a Pirates Life blog. As pretty much... Well, you, I think it's called a Pirate Brick for me. It's pretty much a very... A Pirate Brick for me, right, right. It's a very defunct blog. But I do post on it like once every three, four years or just something. Just out of the it's Pretty much out of the it. blue. No, I don't know if you actually have any way you wouldn't that when you do. Probably well, not. the thing is, when you're actually on Color at Blacktron, you look on the right side and it says, like, there's a list of other blogs. True, and it and tells you the most recent you do post. You get decent views on, uh, on uh... Color at Blacktron still gets decent viewership. Yeah. Even though I only post like once or twice a month, I'm trying to get a little bit better. Hmm. Now, yeah, you've been pretty good. When I'm in I a mean, good black I really mood, should be helping too because I am technically an author, so I can post up there too. But I haven't seen much black drum because I've been too focused on Bionicle. Well, lately there hasn't really been a lot, anyways. I mean, despite being, nothing good. Despite the black drum space force hasn't given us anything good either. They've been a lot of work in progress. Or and it's parts. just a little more annoying to just post something from there because it's a bit more of a process to get the picture and true. Post but online. <laughs> you know, a little side tangent. Um, with a pirate's life. Um. Do you like what? Do you have like ambitions or goals that you want to get in the comic, or or is it there even like an end comic that you want to get to? Like, is there going to be an end to this? Or there is definitely kind of... no end in sight, especially once I opened the whole can of worms of Von C being a character. Like, yep, I can go a lot. Of yeah, I've with seen this. the notes. You have a few. Well. The scripting for the story of that goes a lot further than Edward than the Edward and Rex. Well, I think you described our works as just kind of, it's always a little bit they harder. They just take it one adventure at a time. And yeah, sometimes it's just a little harder. Like the Von C storyline, that's just practically just flows out of me. Like I, well, that because one thing all, happens to another, like, oh, I know what has to happen Well, next. Von C is all lore-based amongst like the old figs and mini figs. So people will react to certain things by, by their character. Which I would say the that the Von C storyline is definitely more geared towards myself and my siblings the edward and rick storyline has the more broader audience and case in point my wife likes the edward and rick storyline more because it's probably a bit easier to follow plus it has a lady character yeah that helps a lot with my wife <laughs> i was just thinking about that i was like yeah we do have a, lot, a bit of a shortage on a uh, female character i think um how one's been pretty good with android files but At like one point yeah i literally noticed like I don't have like any female characters here, so I basically then created a female character, Hanalor, and it took like a few months for her to actually appear in the comic. She's been a good addition, I think. I think it just helped the dynamic of the, the duo because I think adding her and as well as the two um sailors. Yeah, um, actually making Mark the and sailor Saul. Mark and Sal. I'm sorry, Mark and Sal. I mean, actually making. I know them they've characters. had like a couple lines randomly before, like just here and there. But for the longest time, they, they were, were just background guys. They which, were literally there in the background. They were there to sail a ship. They had no lines. 
I think just adding like a bit of a more an entourage of side characters, I think has been a good breath of life for Edward and Rick's. And uh, like it's definitely like the game when they get intertwined with uh, uh, Von C's thing, which it might happen again someday. In fact, it probably will. But like, it's are there still like a bit like really big ambitions you want to get with this? Like, are there still something like you really want to do? Well, I do do want to basically kind of take the characters and spoof the storyline of the uh, Pirates, of Pirates of the Caribbean. I, I very much look forward to that. I've also like wanted to spoof other things because actually one of the first things before I even made this web comic, I wanted to basically make the Star Wars movies in pirates. Yeah, I guess still see the uh, That's Death Star actually from here. where the where I first wanted to do and that led to a pirate's life. I'm assuming you just kind of figured that um doing the Star Wars proof was just gonna be way too much work. Definitely the way I was going about it too. Like I was Well you were actually watching the movie, scripting it down, changing the dialogue. Being way too I was into this doing way too much scripting stuff that it was just it was more work than it should have you're, been. You're you're plagiarizing the uh, script a little too much. It should have just gone off by memory, essentially. Which is if I do it again, yes. Like that's basically what I'm doing for scripting. Like I have started scripting the spoof of Pirates of the Caribbean, and I'm literally just going off of memory. Which is honestly better because. But think... that's also one of the movies I've seen the most, so it's really true. E- it's pretty easy for me to do. I'm still I should watch it again just to refresh my memory though <laughs> any excuse to watch it again uh Akira will gladly take just now, the first one it won't delve into the second or third now, and ugh, now not the fourth the fifth i, I will say there to are the, aspects uh, of the third movie i really like and they will actually like the maelstrom up. battle at the end no i'm specifically thinking the, the brethren island. court well i'm yes. kind of going to be spoofing that the scene upcoming in a pirate's life i i, I look forward to that so much especially because i've even seen like the i because a lot of the Brethren Court stuff kind of came up after you moved out. So I, I actually have actually started taking pictures of the I have less on backstage, um, you know, viewing of a lot of this than I used to. Now there's a few things that you don't know that are going to happen. I figured this. that would probably be true. I, but I'll, I'll say this to um, the, the viewers right now. We're sorry that this is probably not the most, this one doesn't have the least Bionicles in it. But out of your two, this definitely has the lesser amount. A pirate slave. Besides the tournaments. Has not had, a, I don't think, a single Bonacle appear in it. Didn't you have a tournament part when the Pirates Life where a Bonacle would have appeared? I, oh, yes, there was. They did have a Bonacle task. The one time Bonacles did appear in the Pirates Life was like the second storyline, the Christmas tournament, where Edward gets pulled out You're of reality right. and gets thrown into the tournament that happens every year. We will definitely go in depth about the tournament when we talk about Crossroad Championship. It's very important when we it talk about It is the most like inside. Um, uh knowledge that you can get but it also seems like the most epic thing that we could do but yeah it's like it is interesting yes, that the one bit of bionicle was just the bionicle task and it was basically just a bunch of rahi and gadunka yeah not not a whole lot mask. it's like pretty much what the other non-bionicle lego characters see of bionicle that's all they know is there's just giant creatures that terrify you so for those bionicle viewers we're sorry that if you check out this there won't be a lot of bionicle but I would still say it is a worth a, uh, a read and go through. And honestly, binging a comic doesn't take as long as people think it does, I think. No, like I can do Fez in an evening. You and me have gone through a Pirate's Life in like an afternoon reading it's it out loud. It's getting up to 600, so Maybe it's... Maybe now. It's been a while since we've last done it. At least probably about eight months, I'd say, give or take. Well, I've been married for seven. So. Yeah, like I said, since you moved out, we haven't. I don't think we did much near the end because you were spending a lot of time at the house while you were moving in. So we did. I'm pretty sure we did do it once after I'd met my now wife. Oh, definitely, we did do at least one time after. But I don't think we ever got to the point part where Hannah Lore showed up with it. So no, it was basically like before you ended up with all that. Which, by the way, the the reading through your old comics was the one and only time I've managed to somehow. P- get um how one's voice down perfectly for a character a wizard character magisto because that's a main thing that we always associate with um how one's voice that's a very specific more broad and sterner vo- version of it and there was just one line where i said it in my best impression and somehow i just managed to catch it perfectly and i've never been able to replicate that and it bothers Alas, me so much no. i i don't have the the deep um voice to be able to it's do funny it funny when well not even 
it's just amusing when we do go through it and read it out loud. Which we character? very naturally fall into. I read the Edward lines. I read Rex. Exactly. And then certain characters, like I think I generally pick get Weasel, but then you always end up getting like Lord Drake or something. Let's be honest. There's certain characters that we know. It might be a bit more difficult when coming when there's actually just more side characters. Well, I did notice that when we read them because we usually we'd read like Bob, like we go take turns with Bubbles, which usually works with Edward and Rex. But mm-hmm. then you get like Edward Rex, someone else, Rex Edward, or like Edward Rex, someone else, and then you go back to Edward, and then would throw off the pattern just a little bit because we're just used to going back and forth. <laughs> but uh, well, if it was Edward talking to someone, then it'd usually be like I talk. I Pope talk. Wolf talks. You would talk. go back and Pope forth. I will say this. I am glad that... There I'm... are sometimes, though, I have like, oh, I have to say this character because I know he says in a specific way, and I know that Andre Melt doesn't quite get it right. Well, yes. I, I do have a habit of paraphrasing. Well, you know, everyone's reading. brain thinks differently. But the thing is, when I'm reading something, I'm, I'm either expecting to say that or a word or just misread it. I'm very bad and at And sometimes you stuff. just can't quite get it out. Like, like, you have this image in your mind. You just can't quite get it onto the image on the computer. Yeah, my, my brain is very special with stuff like that, but no, I was going to say, um, I feel like there's a lot that could be said, but not a lot that we are saying about it. It's not as, um, I would say, it's hard to explain exactly what to expect from it because it just jumps around a lot with a lot of different stuff, but it, it's an adventure comic. It's very much adventure. That a two-story adventure that there are a couple of uh, merchants, not pirates. Merchants not pirates. go on; they just you know bounce around from adventure to adventure. They'll meet aliens and other pirates. There's a lot of shenanigans that happen. A lot of shenanigans, and I am glad that my original um sig fig from uh, uh ye olden times, ye olden times, managed to sneak into the crew somehow. Which uh, I'll let you guys figure out between which of the two side characters is, was me. I'll just let you guys figure that one out, but. You know, I, I think this has been, you know, we're almost at the 30-minute mark. I think we kind of have gone through most of the uh Pretty thoughts. much described Pirate's Life. I mean, it's like, thoughts. without going into, like, major plot things that we could do, but we don't want to do that. Oh, it's, there, there was a big fight. There's going to be a bigger one. Indeed. That's all I'm going to say. So, but, yeah, no, um, this has been fun. You know, it's always fun chatting about uh, a Pirate's Life with you. I, I, we, we've done this many times, never with a mic before, so... But like I said, for everybody, um, please check it out. Um, I think you might be pleasantly surprised, perhaps. I'd love to get more readers. And, uh, you know, again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and like the video. And like I said, if you want to do it buried in the dirt, get this to a, get me to 100 subscribers. Do it. I dare you. We <laughs> shall bury a new us someday. Now, that's what I'm basically. That's my now incentive. I want to start each podcast saying that. Basically, get people off right at the bat and be like, I want to bury new if I get to 100 subs. And I'm going to see if this works. Like I say, marketing. But yeah, no, um... This has been the Toll Podcast. I have been your host, Anfamel, and we are retiring from the night.